Hi guys, I'm Elisa and I'm back with another video. Today I'm gonna do a wrap up of my spookathon because the spookathon is now over and it's time to do a recount of what I read, how much, how well I did, and did I complete all the challenges, and etc. etc. First of all, I ended up reading a total of 1465 pages, which led to me to finish four books and I completed all five challenges. I never touched another little piece. I will probably get to that at some other point, but I didn't feel like I had time to check this one out at all because, yeah. In a perfect world where I didn't have to work 37 hours a week, I would probably have been able to finish this one as well. The first book that I finished for the readathon was The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor. This is the first book in the Deanna Madden series trilogy. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be. It follows Deanna Madden, who is quite an interesting girl. She has a problem with the fact that when she has this urge to kill people. Especially at night, it's very, very prominent. The way that she makes everything work out is that she sort of locked herself up in a tiny apartment. And as she's staying there, she has to get an income somehow. And that's she gets that from being a cam girl. And as she orders everything online, so she gets a lot of deliveries. And the deliveries being delivered by this, always delivered by the same man. I don't want to give too much away because I think the plot I think the premise of this is super fun. Um, the whole ordeal with her having troubles with not killing anyone is sort of fun. This is not a book for you if you are afraid, uh, if you don't like reading about some sexual content. There's a lot, a lot of that, not a lot like romantically, but with her when she's interacting with all of her clients, there's a lot of explicit details about that. And that's also what leads to this mystery case. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say a lot more. I like the interaction between Diana and the delivery boy called Jeremy. And we also see things from other perspectives, so that adds to the mystery as well. I really enjoyed this book. It, it's a very fast um, read because it has pretty short chapters. Sometimes a chapter could be like this long. Um, sometimes there'll be a lot of chat uh, sections. Anyway, so the format is pretty easy to read and it's a, this one is a 336 pages book or something like that. And yeah, so I really enjoyed reading it. I thought it was fun. I knew where this was leading in the beginning. Um, and I knew that it was sort of, it would, it would have to go this or that way. So it wasn't filled with plot twist, but the premise itself and the interaction between her and the delivery boy and was enough for me to give this a four out of five stars. So I really enjoyed it and would recommend it to you if you think the premise sounds interesting. The second book that I finished this for this readathon was Blood Fever by Cara Marie Monning. This is the second book in the Fever series. The Fever series follows this girl called Michaela, who is who, who lives in the US. She has a sister who has been living in Dublin as an exchange student for some time. I forgot how long it is. I think it's maybe a, about a year or something. And suddenly one day her sister is, is brutally murdered and then the police, when they can't find any more clues, they shut the case down. And Michaela decides that she's gonna go to Dublin to sort of try and figure out what all happened. And when she gets there, there's a lot of things that doesn't add up. And she finds that uh, everything isn't as it seems with her and her sister. And there's, um, yeah. And the Dublin is filled with these very creepy fae, which, there are the unseely fae who are really, really, really terrible. And then there's the seely fae that are better, but still only has their own interests at heart. Um, so you can't really trust them. And then 
Michaela um, sort of stumbles into this bookstore that settles antique books in one of her quests to find answers and she meets this guy called Baron who is the owner of that bookstore and he sort of takes her in in his own way there so he sort of teaches her about this new world that she's been exposed to and yeah I don't want to say a lot more about it because I think the story itself is best without knowing too much about it and I absolutely I really enjoyed the first book but I had some issues with the main character I definitely also enjoyed this one even more I think and and some of the issues that I had with the main character were, were better in this one. Um, so that helps a lot. And I like that one of the things about this, these books is that Baron is, there's so many mysterious things about him that you never really get to know who he is, what he is. And I think that in itself is super fun to try to sort of figure out. And I definitely really enjoyed this one. And the, the mystery elements in this book is also really well done. Um, it keeps one guessing um, all the time and there's there's also um, a lot of talk about how um, how Dublin or Ireland in itself went from um, believing in these faith and on to, on to being a Christian country. Um, that was also really interesting. There's a lot of these sort of details that you get and that was nice. So I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. It's my favorite read of the Spookathon. The next book I finished was my audio, which was the audio of The American Girl. And The American Girl is about this American exchange student who has been living in France. This girl, she's been in a terrible sort of accident. No one really knows what's happened and she's in a coma and can't say anything. And then this a journalist from America decides to go to France to sort of figure out what's all this about and there's a lot of secrecy because it's in a small town and it's everyone knows each other and yeah but then you sort of see things from both um, Quinn who is the, the American exchange student's perspective as well as the journalist's point of view and in the beginning we see mostly snippets from when Quinn, before the accident happened, sort of gets a feel of the characters in that way. And then we see, later on, we see her after she's waking up and she's sort of suffering from some amnesia issues. And I love amnesia topics. Uh, I always think it's interesting trying to figure things out um, together with the, the victim or person the the main character uh, in that way and I also in, liked the setting uh, it was really good and I thought the the journalist character was interesting I wasn't such a big fan of Quinn um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I ended up not loving this as much as, as I thought I would um, I enjoyed the story overall and I enjoyed the pace and I didn't guess all of the things there's definitely some things that happened that I hadn't seen coming um, but I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and I think it's a good thrill thriller but not overly impressive I, as I said I liked the girl in 60 a little bit more and that's why I give this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The last book that I finished for the Spookathon was Flashy Girls and Monster Boys, which is a short story collection that's edited together by April Genevieve to Hulk. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. I, uh, it's such a hard name. I overall really enjoyed this uh, short story collection. Um, it was um, it was interesting and I thought there was a lot of great stories in there um, but I also think I definitely think that the beginning and the end were really strong and um, there were some really good stories in the beginning and during the end but there were some meh parts in the middle with a few good ones in between um, but I think my favorites were Into the Forest Dark and Deep by C Carrie Ryan which was a Alice in Wonderland retelling or a take on Alice in Wonderland 
And then Hide and Seek by Megan Shepherd. I really like that one as well. Yeah, those two were my favorite short stories in this book. And I also gave out a lot of four stars, but those two are the books, the, the stories that stood out to me. Um, I think my, one of my least favorite stories was from Daniel Page. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't like the plot of that one, um, sadly, but I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars because that's the average rating that I was getting if I, I added them all together and divided them with number of stories in this. Um, I guess I could have done it in another way, but that's sort of how I like to rate my anthologies because then I've taken each and every single story into account. And yeah, I enjoyed it. So these were the four books that I finished over the Spookathon. Let me know in the comments down below if you've been participating and how much you did you read. Have you read any of the books that I have picked up? And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video, hopefully very, very soon. Bye-bye.